Okay, let's talk about what CPP is and why this number is so important. CPP stands for Cerebral Perfusion Pressure. And what it is, is it is MAP, which is our mean arterial pressure, so basically the average uh, blood pressure within the system, minus ICP. Okay, we've talked before, ICP is intracranial pressure. That normal, normally should be 5 to 15 millimeters of mercury. Where our MAP, we want to maintain above 65 or so. So what CPP tells us basically is how much pressure there is available to perfuse the brain. Okay, We need to keep it above about 70. If it goes below 70 for a sustained period of time, we're going to suffer from ischemic brain injuries. Now let's think about it. So if we have a stroke um, or if we have swelling in the brain, remember that's going to cause swelling and that's going to cause ICPs to go up. So if our ICP is at 20, if our MAP does not accommodate for that and does not rise as well, then our CPP, our cerebral perfusion pressure, is going to go down. So again, just think of it as MAP is the amount of systemic pressure throughout the entire body, where ICP is what MAP has to fight against in order to get blood up to the brain. Okay, so here's our internal carotids. Now, if our MAP is too low, or if our ICP is too high, that's not going to allow blood to get up into the brain. Remember, ICP is the pressure fighting against our MAP in order to get blood and oxygen to the brain. And if we don't keep it above about 70, there's evidence that that can cause ischemic injuries. Okay, So I hope that helps you understand a little bit what CPP is. It's the pressure that we have available to perfuse our brain. If MAP drops or if ICP goes up, then we're going to have issues. So in, in the instance of um, like a, a brain injuries where, where that we, we have a, an increase in ICP, a tumor or uh, a hemorrhagic stroke or swelling or hydrocephalus, where ICP rises, our MAP must accommodate and must increase as well or we have to find a way to decrease the ICP. We've talked about that before. Some of the things we can do are uh, intraventricular catheter. We can do osmotic directs to bring that fluid off. We can remove a bone flap. Uh, and then there's different nursing interventions we can do as well. We can raise the head of the bed. We can decrease stimulation. So things like that can help us to decrease ICP. And then we can also provide different uh, medications to help increase MAPs. Um, we can do vasopressors or things like that to try to increase the MAP while we're trying to uh, decrease our ICP. Hey guys, it's John with NRSNG.com. Thanks for stopping by and checking out our YouTube channel. Be sure to subscribe so you find out about all of our new videos as they come out. Listen, nursing school doesn't have to be so hard. That's why I created NRSNG.com. When I was in nursing school, I became so frustrated with administration that just didn't seem to care, professors that didn't know the content or just read from PowerPoints, and so many other problems. So NRSNG was created to give you the tools, the support, and the guidance, and the community that you need as a nursing student to accomplish your goal of becoming a nurse. Nursing is awesome. In my time as a nurse, I've worked as a charge nurse, a preceptor, I'm an RN, a CCRN, and I've done so much with my career, and I want to give back to you guys. So be sure to subscribe, check out the free book down below, 140 Must Know Meds, and be sure to check out the other videos that other students have found very helpful. You guys, thank you so much for stopping by. You can do this. Nursing is an awesome career, and I hope to see you around.